Did you know that Asus has secretly upgraded their best productivity laptop? In fact, I would go as far as saying that Asus probably themselves doesn't know fully that they've upgraded it. So what exactly has changed? Because if you look at the previous and the new version, looks like nothing's changed. And it's a real good thing. So this is the Asus ZenBook Duo 2025 and what's changed and why this is still the best productivity laptop. Let me explain. Firstly, in order to not repeat myself, I have made a lot more in-depth video about the previous year's model and I highly recommend you checking that one out. I'll leave it in the description below because in there I'm going to talk about the performance, the actual specs, what's changed, some of the usability, what you can do with it and making this about the new model would be very much the same so I don't want to make the same video. Instead I want to add to that so if you're not familiar with that product go check it out because I'll go in depth about that in that review. But in this video I want to talk about what's actually changed and is it still worth buying. Now perhaps it's best starting to talk about the whole idea of making little incremental changes or continuously improving a product rather than reinventing the wheel every single year. This is more common than you actually think. So if you look at some of the high-end brands like Apple, their laptops look very, very similar now, like five years ago. If you look at Rolls-Royce, Bentley, their cars look very similar now, like five, 10 years ago. And some of the other high-end brands. One of my favorite examples is a Nissan GT-R. If you look at the model when it came out, I think 2014, and then now, 2025 or 24 they look very very similar yet there's very small incremental changes that have made the car even faster now this is actually a japanese mindset called kaizen i think i'm pronouncing this right which means continuously improving i remember when i had my toyota as the car i looked at some of the panels on the side of the door and i was like these are the exact same window knobs that i remember my uncle had 20 years ago so the thing is, why change the knob? If it works, it's still perfect and there's no complaints about it. And I agree, why change it? Spend it somewhere else. So this is exactly what's happened here with the Zenebook Duo, or should I point it this way because that's the actual new version. And if you look back the previous versions of Zenbook, they have slowly improved the design of Zenbook Duo. Do you remember the smaller design uh, of a laptop where we had a smaller little screen in there on top of the keyboard. Remember, I, I checked that out. Who's still subscribed since them days? I really enjoyed that laptop, but this, I think, is taking that whole idea to perfection. I'm just enjoying that a lot more. Now, it's even better than before. Okay, let's get to the point. What exactly has changed? Because the screens, the displays, most of the outside has not changed at all. There are four changes that I can find that they have made. Number one, they've moved their I.O. ports around. USB-C port is now on both sides. I'll show you that in a minute. We have Wi-Fi 7 instead of Wi-Fi 6E. We've got Core Ultra 285H as the top end. So we have the 200 series Core Ultra laptop CPUs inside now. And fourthly, finally, we've got a difference in the keyboard. Instead of control on the right, we've got the Core Ultra, as you can see over there. The rest of the things are exactly the same. I tested the Core Ultra 7 155H and then the Core Ultra 9 285H. So they're not exactly comparable because one is Ultra 7 and then Ultra 9. What is the actual performance difference? I'm getting a Cinebench score here of 840 points and around 123 points a single core score and then compared to the core ultra 7 i'm getting a single core of 100 or 101 and then a multi-core score of 525 so that is roughly around 60 percent improvement from the previous model to the new model in multi-core performance of cpu if we compare to the 7 to the 9 and about 21 percent performance increase in single core performance. So the Core Ultra 9 100 series would have had a little bit of a better performance, but still quite impressive. Where do these scores kind of line up then? Like what is 840 points in single core? You might be saying like, who knows that? I'm glad you asked. If we're looking at the M1 Max MacBook Pro or whatever other device you can find with M1 Max on, then the multi-core in there is 791. As you can see, the Core Ultra 9 here 
is a little bit better. The Ryzen 7 5800X desktop CPU that pulls twice the amount of power what we can see on this laptop gets 824 multi-core score. So that multi-core score here is quite impressive. But when we're talking about the performance, there's a few other things I'd like to mention. Number one, when I'm testing it battery or plugged in, I'm not seeing any difference in performance, which is good news because now we're not losing any performance if we are on battery. I guess the bad news there is that we don't gain any performance if we plug the laptop in. In terms of AI performance, because of the new graphics card uh, and the new architecture on the Core Ultra 285H and the new arc that's going on in there, the performance is actually up to three times faster than the previous model, which is pretty impressive. In terms of RAM, it's still 32 gigabytes on both and even though the Core Ultra 200 series could support up to 8400 megatransfers per second with the LPDDR5X RAM, we're still running the same speed on both of them, 7467 megahertz. And one last thing that I've noticed with the new model is that they've improved the cooling or the noise fair amount. I'm seeing the old one often spin up with quite loud fan noise, whereas the new one is a lot more quiet. And this is really, really good because it seems like it's more powerful, quieter, and makes less noise. I mean, all of these things are just amazing for me. Obviously, if you don't know what this laptop is, I still think this is the best productivity laptop and one of my favorite laptops that I like to use behind the scenes. Because of the dual screen layout, I am a big fan of screen real estate. If I can, I always have a bigger one. Asus ProArt P16 instead of something else because I love bigger screens. I got my MacBook Pro as the 16 inch, not 14 inch. I'm using a 32 inch monitor up here rather than 27 inch, even though the distance could kind of work on both. I just love big screen real estate. I don't like crammed windows. Are you that type of person? I just don't like it. Here, this is absolutely fantastic. If you're a coder, or an accountant or someone that needs to look at a lot of data on the go. Let's say you look at something and then make notes or writing down something on the other one. Oh my word, this is an absolute life changer. And the battery power and the battery life and performance is still super, super impressive. And I can't believe how comfortable it is to actually use this tiny paper thin keyboard. One of my favorite keyboards out there. It reminds me a lot of my Logitech's MX Master. Obviously, it's not a mechanical keyboard, but this is one of my favorite keyboards that's out there. And this reminds me of that very, very well. Now, in terms of pricing, this new guy comes in at roughly $1,700 for the pretty much maxed out spec of this, which is not bad at all, considering you're getting two 3K OLED displays with 120 Hertz. That's absolutely bonkers. And if you wanna watch the content sideways, just like that, uh, be my guest. You can do that as well. There is one downside about this laptop that I've seen is some of the other laptops have as well that does my head in quite a bit. And that is that even though on the specs, the ISO says that it is a 10 bit panel, which is kind of true. Okay. It's got over 1 billion colors there. But the thing is you only get it when it's plugged in and you're on HDR mode. So when you're just browsing through on the go, it's 8-bit. Now, is it bad or good? Why give me not 10-bit all the time? That's one of my downsides. And then if we actually look at Asus's website here that talks about this, they say the ports you need. And if you look over here, they show you that there's two Thunderbolt ports on one side and then nothing on the other side. Well, the truth is slightly different. If we're looking on this side, that is the new model of ZenBook Pro. You can see now we've got a USB-C also on the right side, which I think is a great idea. So you're not actually restricted which side you wanna use your charger on because both of these USB-C ports on both of the models are Thunderbolt 4. So you can charge them and Thunderbolt 4 as well on both sides. And if we're looking on the left side, you can see here we've got two USB-C ports, obviously on the old one, but then one on the new one. So Asus's home webpage, is showing the previous model. So they don't even know that it's been upgraded. In terms of upgradability, if you go and check out my other video, you'll see that it is possible to upgrade it, but it's quite a DIY project. It's, it's just pull the whole thing apart and then see what happens because unfortunately can't access the M.2 SSD that is in there and there is no secondary slot available. There could be, but there isn't. I've been using the old one and new one quite a bit and the new one actually is a lot more snappier. Everything else seems the same, but 
I can really see that there has been improvement. Now, do I think that it's worth for you to upgrade from the previous model to the new one? I don't really think so. If you're planning to buy one, buy the new version, because that is quite a bit better, quieter. There are little bits of improvements that they have made. If you want to check this laptop out, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, which is an affiliate link at no extra cost to you. I will get a small commission. Maybe, maybe not. It depends what the deal is on with their terms and conditions at the point of view watching this video. It helps to support the channel, so thanks for using them. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll leave you with this question. Do you think this laptop would be better with a dedicated GPU or not?